Hi, welcome back. In the last video, we learned about the V-ray material shader and the different parameters like reflection, refraction, and bump, which are needed to create a realistic material. In the next series of videos, we are going to be putting this knowledge to practical use by trying our hands on various material types. We will learn how to create a paint material, a metallic material, wood, and finally a glossy ceramic material. This scene already has a dome light setup with an HDR image, so our renders won't render out black. To begin, create four spheres for the four materials we'll be creating. If you don't know how to do this, consider watching one of my previous videos where I talk about the basics of Maya before you progress. But don't worry, I'll, I'll wait for you. Welcome back, all those who left and are now returning, hopefully with the knowledge to create a sphere. You can go ahead and create four spheres now. Scale them up to any size you want. Position them wherever you want. It doesn't really matter, just make sure they are visible and that there are four of them. Remember, you can just create one sphere and use Ctrl D to duplicate it many times. Now create a very material for the first sphere and head over to the attribute editor and change the material name to paint. Start up the V-Ray IPR so we can get a preview of what's going on in the scene. If your rig doesn't support the IPR, you can just start a test render instead. In the IPR, we can see all four of our spheres and the HDRI. Open the light lister from the V-Ray shelf. It's a literal light bulb. You can't miss it. We are going to make the dome light invisible because it's kind of distracting and the grass is kind of ugly to be honest. But it was the first HDR I ever used, so I keep it around for sentimental reasons and not just because I'm too lazy to try out a different one. Pause the IPR and head over to the outliner. Rename the selected sphere, the one we assigned the very material to. Maya adds a number because there's already an asset named paint, the paint material we created earlier. And you can't have duplicate names in Maya, ever. Even when the names are assigned to different types, in this case a sphere and a material. Hide the other spheres by shift selecting all of them in the outliner and pressing H on the keyboard. Close the outliner and unpause the IPR. If you aren't using the IPR, now may be a good time to open up the hypershade so you can preview the material there. If you don't know about the hypershade, no worries, I've got you covered. I already made a video of it right here. Check it out, it has motion motion graphics which are cool I guess. Open up the attribute editor or the property editor if you are in the hypersheet and let's start messing around with some of the values. First the diffuse color. I think I'm going to go with blue paint because blue is my favorite color. I'm going to go with light blue and decrease the saturation quite a bit. Now you may think you are done because after all it's paint. You can just change the color and be on your way. But if you want to create a realistic material, you have to know that almost every material reflects lights. That's how we are able to see them, because the light reflected from them enters our eyes from an image. In order to mimic reality, we need to give our material subtle reflections, even the ones that seem that they don't reflect anything. So I'm going to increase the reflection color and increase the reflection glossiness, so I get matte reflections. You don't really see any changes here, but it does make a difference in the render as a whole. Be careful though, because reflections add to render time, so if you don't have a really powerful rig, you might want to use this sparingly. Let's change the paint color to red, my second favorite color, and now you start to see the effect of those reflections. The sphere looks just a tiny bit more believable. Go to the outliner and unhide the next sphere by clicking on it and pressing H on the keyboard. H toggles between hidden and not hidden. Hide the paint sphere and rename the second sphere metal. Assign a very material to the sphere and rename the material whatever you want. I'm going to go with metal sphere because it's a metal sphere, don't judge me. We already created a metallic material in our last video, so you should already be familiar with this. Change the diffuse color to any shade of grey you want. Increase the reflection color, glossiness and metallic values to their highest and the sphere becomes a very reflective metal. We see that messing around with these four values creates a variety of metal materials. We can even create chrome using this method. Let's go to the light lister and make our dome light a hemisphere by disabling the sphere option so we can see how our metal material looks without the grass reflections. 
you can make the dome light a sphere if you want. You can also tweak these values until you end up with the metal you are satisfied with. Next, let's create a cube so we see how our material looks on another type of object. Open up the hypershade and assign the metal sphere material to the cube. Yes, I know. I now recognize the folly of naming my material the way I did, but I a good one. Increasing the reflection color, glossiness and metalness makes the cube very reflective. It acts as a mirror. I'm going to vertically scale up the cube so it looks a bit like the Xbox Series Series X, Series S, Series A. Just insert a random alphabet there, Charlie. We all know that's what Microsoft does. Again, play with the four values until you get the metal material you want. When you are done, hide the metal cube and sphere and unhide the next sphere. Assign a new v material to it. Rename it. You, you know the drill. I'm naming this one Wood MTL. This time we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to assign a wood texture to the diffuse color slot. I'm going to go with this texture which is like wooden panels, the kind we use for floors and ceilings. Let's open up the frame buffer and see how it looks in real time. It looks kind of flat and cartoony right now, but that's okay because we are going to fix that in a bit. Increase the reflection color and we see that the wood material starts to reflect its surroundings. Decrease the reflection glossiness to about half so we get a matte finish. Keep tweaking until you find the right look for your material. I ended up going for a subtle glossy finish. The wood material now looks a bit more realistic, but it's still kind of flat. Let's go ahead and attach a bump map. We talked about bump maps in the previous video, so I'll just brush up on them over here. If you don't have bump maps for your textures, you can always create them in Photoshop. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on that and I'll do it. If you go closer, we can see that our texture looks rough and we can see the individual grains of wood, which means our bump map is working. It's working a little too well to be honest, so I'm going to reduce the value. Let's try 0.1. And yeah, that's, that's much better. The bump is still there, but it's subtle now. We can tweak the values and try different textures to see what you get. But I think I'm going to stick with this. You can also attach normal maps in the same way. They are superior to bump maps, so you might want to give them a try. Okay, next. Let's open up the outline and... Ah, it looks like I forgot to rename the sphere. Oh, no matter, I'll just rename it to wood. Okay, now hide the wood sphere and unhide the last sphere. Rename the last sphere ceramic. Create a new view material for ceramic. Name it whatever you want. I'm naming my ceramic MTL. Change the diffuse color to white, but not absolute white. I don't know why, but nearly white always looks better than absolute white. Increase the reflection color and reflection glossiness to the highest possible values and that's pretty much it. You've created a very glossy ceramic slash porcelain ball. I never did know the difference between those two but who cares right? As long as it looks good. Anyways, this is the kind of material you use for sanitary equipment like bathroom sinks, bathtubs, toilets and the like. So we have finally come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like and I have other Maya videos if you want to check them out. It would be nice if you did. For the next series of videos, we're going to deal with refractive materials like glass and water. I know they can be a bit tricky but like I said, I got you covered. If you want to watch that video when it comes out, then consider subbing to the channel or don't. It's your choice. Or is it really?